Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me again today. I just want to show you what's happening out in the garden here. It's, it's the 20, Friday the 24th of September and I'm hoping that I'll get this video up for you today. Um, if not, it'll go up on Saturday. It's spring here and, and the garden is in this transition phase of being plentiful but also having bare patches as well. And I just want to show you the garden and everything that I've got happening here and, and all the wonderful things that are that are sprouting and growing and then also some of the things that have, have died off and, and my bare patches that I need to plant out. Um, so I, I hope you really enjoy <laughs> sorry I hope you really enjoy this little tour around the garden today and I'm really excited to show you a few things that have that have popped up and that have happened and it's just it's just amazing how such a short short time period so much can change in your garden and and also how much joy it brings just to come out and and just be here and and feeling a part of nature so let's get going i'm going to take you first around to the side garden by the clothesline because there's something really amazing happening over there let's go and take a look all right guys, we're around at the side garden and the grapevine is what I want to show you. I, um, last time I showed you that it was only just starting to bud and come out, but now I came out here the other day. It actually has some grapes on it. There's little grapes forming everywhere. So this is a really nice, tasty grape. This is the Black Isabella grape that I have and it's got um it's it's got seeds in it which is fine but it's got this real nice fragrant um florally sort of flavored grape i actually really like it and i think i'm going to have way too many for us to eat that i'm going to just put it through the juicer and save it as as grape juice and probably use it in my kombuchas and and my second ferments of stuff like that while i'm here I just wanted to show you our gate. We had to put all this panelling up on the inside because our dear little friend down here, Ace, figured out that at the gates there was ledges and he could jump over. So we had to, at both of our gates, we had to repanel so that there was panels on the inside as well as the outside. And just while we're on the theme of grapes, I have another grape vine which is um, so down there is where the first grapevine is and then we come along the same so they're coming along the same fence line and there's this other grape here now this one is called um, pink Iona and I actually haven't got any grapes from this one yet and this appears to be the first season that I'm gonna get grapes from it so I'm pretty excited to see what they turn out like how they taste I'm pretty sure actually that this one's got a seed in it as well and there are so many grapes forming on it that I might have to do the same thing and um, just juice the excess that we have. I tried dehydrating the Black Ionas, uh, the Isabella Blacks um, last season. They, they dehydrated nice. Um, I might have dehydrated them a bit too long because they're very crunchy but I wasn't I wasn't too keen on the on the flavor of them afterwards and I've used them in a second ferment of my kombucha and I it just just isn't really doing it for me so so I'm thinking that this season I will definitely go with the um, with the juicing and just get the juice from any excess that we have now this this little little um, 1.2 by 1.2 I think it is bed that I've got here I was starting to get a little bit a little bit sad about this bed because everything kept coming and eating well I don't know if you can see that there it's a, it's a very struggling zucchini seedling um, kept coming and um, eating my seeds and then I wasn't too sure whether the other ones were going to germinate but I have actually had some success in here so I'm pretty pleased about that. I planted another couple of seeds in here and then also 
over here so hopefully we can have some succession planting and it'll it'll take over that um mabuna i think i think that's how you pronounce it that mabuna there i need to cut that back again and turn that into i'm thinking maybe this time round i might turn it into more like a kimchi rather than a sauerkraut so i might add the the ginger and the garlic and the chilies and stuff like that and and do it more as a as a as a kimchi there are some things in the garden that i think oh my god hurry up please just please just grow faster you're taking too long i think this is why i don't really plant from seed very often because starting out with seed it it is going to take a while for it to germinate and grow and get big and strong and um sometimes i'm just a little bit impatient but i am really enjoying the journey of putting the seeds in and then and then seeing them germinate and hoping and praying crossing my fingers that they do actually germinate so um, I just want to show you Matt's chili bed because that is actually going along really nicely so all of his little seedlings are starting to really really bulk up but this is a transplant from the front garden and it has a whole heap it, it's transplanted really nicely and it's got a whole heap of beautiful chilies coming through on it and this one here transplanted from the front garden really well as well and it's got some really nice green leaves happening on it in one of my previous videos i i i, t I told you about a tomato um sucker that i got from one of my clients now they are actually doing well one's doing really well this one here is is going really nicely but the one next to it isn't it isn't thriving quite as well. Now this is the pineapple tomato and it's an heirloom. Um, I'm hoping this one survives. It's, it's looking okay, but it's not, it's not thriving like this one here is, is really thriving. I'm, I'm not too sure whether that's got to do, and I, I sh really should have done my research about this, but I did have the spring onions just planted in the bed just over here. So I'm not too sure whether whether it didn't like that combination of the onions and the tomatoes close together. So right next door in this space here, I've put in um, melon seeds. I have my fingers crossed that they will germinate and grow up, grow up the trellis. Now these are personal small size. It says on the packet that they will be around about a softball size melon and you can eat the skin and the flesh. And it's called a succotar sweet melon i'm actually really really keen on on that um, on those seeds um, sprouting and germinating and growing up and over the trellis it, i think i think it'll look really nice with these little white balls hanging from the top of the trellis now moving on from this same the same bed with the tomatoes and the melons that i was just talking about you can see that i've actually cleared it out like i said i've moved the spring onions that were there and um, there was a whole heap of nasturtiums but I, I don't need the nasturtiums in the garden bed they can grow along the side and and over over in places where I, they can take over if they're just too big for the beds but here i've still got some some bok choy that has gone to seed and this silver beet is going really well so what my plans are for this garden is actually to to replant some carrots and some beetroot in here i've still got the beetroot and the carrot but i'll be harvesting them quite sh shortly and then i've got the, the purple kohlrabi which i think is well some of them kind of look as if they're ready but yeah so in here i want to do a couple more lines of beetroot and carrots and then also over here, there's a whole heap of empty space. So I wouldn't mind filling that up with some more root vegetables, just while the weather's still cool enough for them to, to grow. And at the other end of this trellis are those cucumbers that, um, that came out of the worm farm and were volunteers. So I've got three of them along here. One's doing really well. The next one's doing okay. And then the third one that's been covered up um, by this mustard green is doing meh. It's still alive, it's average, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. 
but my cucamelon to the side here doesn't seem to be going too fantastic but um, we'll just see how that goes as well I don't mind the flavor of the cucamelons but they do take over so if it just grows a small amount that is absolutely fine by us I tried fermenting them um, a couple of years ago and they were nice but um, they weren't fantastic so they didn't get eaten up a huge amount but if you like the fact that you've got this grape sized um, cucumber and it kind of when you ferment it it kind of takes on a little bit of an olivey sort of a flavor then ferment them they, they, are, they, are, they are nice but um, they just weren't to my family's palate <laughs> Over in this other retaining wall bed, I have planted, now, now this is where I want that arch to go between this bed and this bed. I haven't planted anything on that side except for that, that cauliflower that's there going to seed. On this side, I have already planted out hot banana chili seeds, hoping that they germinate. Um, I have had pretty good success with, with see, uh, chili seeds and capsicum seeds germinating from store-bought stuff and that's all that one was so we'll just see how it goes and um, fingers crossed they maybe should start germinating fairly soon I still have the cabbage some more wombok and oh this is a new addition you guys haven't seen this one this chili I went to um, to Bunnings the other the other week at, well the only the other day actually and I saw this chili and it's a variegated leaf so um, it's got the different colors on it but the chilies oh sorry it's a capsicum they also have the variegation on it until they turn red so I'm I'm looking forward to to picking them when they're not when they're not fully ripe I mean they're going to taste beautiful all the way through and just get that different colors happening so I'm actually really excited about this one and in the pot there was two of them so I've got another one over in one of the garden beds over there my jalapenos just over the back here they've got some beautiful flowers coming out on them so they should start fruiting soon and they've all settled into this bed really nicely same with this transplant and then I've put in here all these four here they are called a capsicum mini sweet chock so they'll have a nice brown sweet capsicum I've noticed over here and I'll come back to these pots in a minute this one here was a volunteer and it came out from the bottom of the compost bin and, and I'm thinking it's just a small um, a small capsicum or it could actually be a jalapeno. So I'm really not too sure about that, but we will soon find out when this one is ready. Back to these pots. I, um, I had some pots laying around and they're self-watering ones. So I've planted some ox heart tomatoes, um, three seeds in that one and three seeds in this one here that I am hoping will germinate and grow up and I've put these these wire cages so it can grow up and then back over um, I'm I'm thinking I might need to get a little bit of holly pipe or something to just stick over the top so that it doesn't um, damage the tomato stems when they when they come up and over the garden brings me so much joy joy especially when I don't know if the camera is picking this up but there are so many native bees on these onion flowers it is just so beautiful to see i love coming out into the garden and seeing all the pollinators the bees and everything coming and just enjoying and having a feast and doing what nature it has what nature wants them to do it is really lovely i'm letting this um this onion go to seed I put it up on my Instagram and Facebook page the other day. I can't actually remember what sort of an onion is it is. I think it might be a red onion, but I planted it a couple of seasons ago and it was the only one that survived and I have never actually, obviously I've never taken it out. But once this um, finishes flowering and I get seeds from it, I will harvest this, this onion. Not, <laughs> then I'll know what it is. 
and hopefully I can replant the seeds next season when it when it comes into onion season and start from the beginning I've even got big European honeybees I think that might be George from my hive I named all my bees in my hive no I didn't <laughs> there was way too many of them <laughs> I can't tell the difference um, but I do I'm hoping the camera is actually picking up all these bees I am I'm not too sure if you saw that but I, I am kind of over the cabbage moth being around as well it's um it is causing a little bit of havoc in the garden I am having to squish a lot of cabbage moth um, larvae and see um, and and eggs and stuff but that's just par for the cause because I don't I don't use any chemicals I I very rarely spray and and do any other sort of um, deterrent except for coming out and squishing and and killing um, occasionally I'll make up a mixture of um, chili garlic and onion and then let that soak in water overnight and spray the plants with that um, but that's not something that I do very often I like to be very I guess you could call organic but very natural with the way I grow my garden so yes I am going to have some failures but I'm also going to have some massive successes as well and and my food my produce is going to come out tasting tasting better for it I think um, so we yeah we don't use I don't use any any sort of chemicals on this garden whatsoever the rest of this garden's going all right it's still got all the stuff from from the winter crop I have I have thinned it out and cut it back and pulled out a lot of the broccolis that had gone to seed and I've, I've kept one over there which I'll keep the seeds from um, this broccoli here I have kept it's still giving me a few little heads but I actually want to it, this one seems to be hardier than the others so I really want to let um, maybe these two here go go to seed go to flower and go to seed and I'll just harvest these two little ones and I'd really like to save the seeds from that one to plant out next season but like my kale the lettuce because it's getting warm is just bolting and going to seed but that's okay I'm letting it go to seed the bees can come in and and have a nice little feed and then the seeds of this will just blow around and I'll get random lettuces everywhere which is actually how these ones got in here and this one here they were just they were volunteers I'd like to I have had this gorgeous little frog in this in this lot of kale now this this kale is a um, Tuscan black kale I've had this gorgeous frog in here let me see if I can find him <gasps> there he is he's a tiny little frog but he seems to love living in this plant I'm, I'm, I'm happy that that little frog is enjoying his his life in this kale plant I would really like to move this spring onion out and maybe put it just in the garden over here somewhere and and utilize this space way better now this is where I've got all of those baby capsicums they are coming up and they're growing really nicely it's it's almost time that I um, I thin them out so the capsicums that I thin out I'm thinking I might um, if, if they look strong enough I might just plant them into little pots and then either and grow them up and get them nice and strong and either plant them out somewhere else in the garden or I might even just give them away to some friends um, and and they can plant them in their garden and enjoy the and enjoy the lovely fruits of of my labor I have been picking so many strawberries from this little strawberry patch and the one over the other side. I've been coming out every morning and and just picking them and having them for my breakfast in my granola or just or just as I walk around the patch I'll, I'll pick a strawberry and have a little munch but I also have some beautiful figs coming out on this on this fig tree that's that's above the strawberry patch. I knew when I scattered this, the daikon radish seeds over this bed that it was way too many radishes for the space so it has been so hard for me to keep up the water to this 
I will start to harvest some of these and thin it out. They will be smaller roots, but but that's okay. It doesn't matter. I mean, look at look at the bounty that I have and that, that I can choose from. I might actually um, pull some of these daikon radishes with them a boona and do that um, kimchi style. This volunteer capsicum that's at the end, it's going really well. It has a beautiful big fruit on it just there and another one coming on. So I, I, I got fruit off this capsicum last year and it was really nice and I'm, I'm pleased that it's it's made its way through the winter and, and we're getting stuff off it again now. But if this one here continues on, I'll leave him there. So we have two of the capsicums next door to each other. I have to show you guys this. I am actually quite excited. The um, West Indian gherkins, they have germinated and I'm actually quite happy with the germination rate that I got on them. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, I've got at least six of them germinated so um, I'm just going to keep babying them and get them to grow up. I actually really can't wait to taste these ones and to, to see them grow because they're the, they're the soft prickly ones that, that I accidentally bought but I'm, I'm actually extremely excited about them so I can't wait to take you guys on the journey of the West Indian gherkins with me and we can we can see how it all goes together now while we're on the subject of cucumbers this is where i planted the long white cucumber seeds i'm not too sure this might be one and these might be a few I, i'm just not too sure um, they look like cucumbers i'm hoping that they're the long whites but i have gone and planted a couple of seeds where i know exactly where they are um, at either end of this this part of the trellis so that hopefully I, I get at least least one if not two long whites these might be volunteers out of the the worm farm stuff that i put in here i'm hoping not i'm really hoping that it's the long whites and and they grow really nicely i told you i put in um, some really long red um, capsicum seeds well as you can see they are doing absolutely amazing i'll probably wait another week and let the really weak ones die off and then i'll do the same as what i'm going to do to um, the little capsicums that i've got and i will just pot um, thin them out and take out of the thinnings i'll take the strongest ones and pot them up and get them nice and strong and either plant them somewhere else or give them to friends um, over here as well in this same garden I'm I'm absolutely loving this trellis and having the tomatoes climb up the cherry tomatoes climb up and over it um, I have another one of the um, variegated capsicums and it's got some capsicums on it this little capsicum it does have some it does have some striping to it and it actually looks really cute and sweet now at the end of this bed I planted some um, black russian tomatoes that's what i was thinking of next to these cherry tomatoes now i had um i put i put i originally planted three black russians in here and two of them did really well and one i thought got eaten and died and so i went and i replaced it i got another black russian tomato and replaced it and it's actually struggling so i'm really not too sure what is going on with this this corner of the bed i'll give you a look and um and show you what i mean but then again this morning it's not looking too bad so maybe it's just the transplant and i need to give it more water than i had been giving it or it just needed that little bit longer to settle in i'm not too sure but i'll turn you around and i'll show you so it's this little tomato here that this is the corner where the one died and then I planted it and I planted a bigger one in here and planted it deeper so it could get a better root system. This morning it's not looking too bad so maybe maybe it was just a bit of a transplant shock or something I'm not too sure and then I've got this one and that tiny little one over there. My tiny little okra that I got he's cruising along quite nicely. Um, he's growing up. Now before I go any further, how beautiful is this bit of garden art that Matt brought home for me the other day? 
I, I just love it. I love the way it looks in, in the garden and I think it just looks so cool in this garden bed. It just makes, because I've got the trellis there, I think it just makes this little garden bed look like some sort of a little trailer or wagon or something, al something along those lines. On the fence line back over here in one of the corners, I would really like a really old, really old metal gate and put a backing on it just to make it look as if there's, just to make it look as if there's a door there. You know, stuff like that, some quirky bits and pieces and stuff like that, just to, just to really add some more character into this garden. I really like the idea of having these little quirky bits and pieces around and it's just, I guess it's just us, you know? So that's a quick little tour of the garden this morning. Um, I'm, I'm so excited with everything that's happening. Yes, there are bare patches in the garden, but they're to be planted out. It is, it is kind of a transition stage at the moment. So it, it's okay to have, have bare patches for things to rest and, and for you to still enjoy the garden because there is honestly still so much productivity in this garden. I, I really can't complain about having some bare patches. So big hugs until next time. Thank you so much.